Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, Mesdames et Messieurs, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am very pleased to welcome you all in the Munira Palace to listen to our distinguished guest tonight, Professor Peter Stone. The invitation of uh, Professor Peter Stone is an initiative of the Université Française d'Égypte and Professor Fekri Hassan, whom I would like to thank warmly for uh, associating the different French operators involved in heritage and uh, heritage preservation, the Institut Français d'Égypte, the Agence Française de Développement, and of course IFAO, the French Institute of Oriental Archaeology uh, in its house here. Before the keynote lecture by Professor Stone, His Excellency Stéphane Romaté, Ambassador of France in Egypt, will evoke the French initiatives in the protection of cultural heritage in danger as a follow-up of the international conference organized jointly by France and the United Arab Emirates in Abu Dhabi in December 2016. Another key actor in the protection of cultural heritage is, of course, UNESCO, and we are honored tonight uh, by the presence of uh, Mrs. Tatiana Villegas from the UNESCO Bureau in Cairo. Unfortunately, the director of the Bureau, Mr. Gail Faris, could not be with us uh, tonight. Mrs. Villegas will present the publication of a new guide destined to the armed forces for the protection of cultural heritage in periods of conflict. She will be followed by a short word by Professor Fekri Hassan, the director of the Master Program in Heritage Management at the Université Française uh, d'Égypte, and he will introduce a training program on the protection of heritage, likewise destined to the armed forces. I thank you very much for joining us, very numerous today, and uh, I wish you a pleasant evening. I will come back to introduce our distinguished speaker a bit later. I would also like to uh, thank especially the technical and communication staff of the EFA and of the IFAO for the organization of tonight's lecture. I now leave the floor to His Excellency Mr. Stéphane Romaté for his address to the public. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Je mets ça. Okay. Merci beaucoup, uh, cher Laurent, and thank you very much to host us tonight in this uh, magnificent, sumptuous Heritage Palace here at, uh, at Munira, the FAO. And I, I would like to thank also all the partners of this evening. Uh, uh, of course, uh, l'Université française d'Égypte, uh, l'Institut français, et puis aussi uh, l'Agence française de, de développement. It's really my great privilege, Mr. Professor, to welcome you tonight for uh, this uh, your conference. Uh, you, how can I present you? You are, uh, you know, you have a, a record, a career which is absolutely uh, astonishing, uh, and you are both an academic and also, I would say, uh, a, a practitioner. Uh, this is something which is very uh, interesting in your curricula. I read your curricula very carefully, and I noticed uh, you have so many achievements uh, as an academician you know, in the University of uh, Newcastle, where you dedicated most of your career. You created there, I think, uh, an institute, a cultural, uh, sorry, an international center for studies in the field of culture and heritage. But you are also a, a practitioner because I noticed that uh, you uh, advised uh, the Ministry of Defense, the British Ministry of Defense, uh, especially during uh, the, the Iraqi War in 2003. And uh, you campaigned, uh, you know, the British Army in Iraq uh, just for the awareness of uh, the soldiers, of the officers in the field of uh, protection of uh, culture and, uh, and heritage. Uh, I just want to, to, to tell you that uh, we are very much looking forward you know, listening to you because uh, you will uh, draw uh, in front of uh, this very large audience uh, the lessons which could be uh, you know, uh, uh, taken from uh, recent conflicts in the field of uh, protection of heritage and culture. And we all have in mind you know, shocking photos, videos, you know, the destruction of the uh, Buddha's statues in uh, Bamiyan in Afghanistan, 
And of course, we will have in mind also the very shocking uh, images of the, uh, the sacking, the, 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 the looting of uh, uh, museums in, uh, in Kabul, in, in Baghdad, uh, in Mosul too, the destruction of uh, uh, Nimrod in the northern uh, part of, uh, of Iraq. And of course, we will have in mind uh, the destruction of the, the Bell Temple in, uh, in Palmyra. And I think the audience to tonight would be very eager just to get one simple answer from you. Is it too late? Is it too late to protect our heritage in, uh, in the Middle East especially? And if not, what can we do? And each time uh, a destruction is made, you know, a looting is made, a traffic is organized, this is uh, the same attitude from these uh, destructors. They want intentionally to erase pieces of our civilization. They want to kill the cultural diversity, especially the cultural diversity in the Middle East. And so to face these challenges, we have to, to mobilize ourselves. We have to, to, to raise awareness and certainly we'll, you will contribute to it tonight. And we have also to educate and to train. So you will tell us exactly what to do when we are confronted uh, in a situation of conflicts to this key and crucial is issue of protecting our common heritage. Last year, and uh, Laurent uh, just uh, mentioned it, uh, France was, was at the initiative of uh, gathering a big conference in Abu Dhabi. The theme of this conference is very close to, to the theme of your own lecture tonight, uh, how to protect heritage in uh, endangered heritage in, in conflict zones. And a series of uh, measures were adopted, creation of uh, a protection fund, uh, mechanisms of uh, refuge for uh, archaeological uh, uh, pieces, uh, and also you know, protection of archaeologists, etc., etc. And I'm sure that you will tell us exactly where we are in uh, implementing such, uh, such measures which were decided uh, last year in Abu Dhabi. And of course, uh, UNESCO is a key player you know, in, this, in this field of uh, protecting our cultural heritage. And I'm sure, madame, you will give us also insight uh, about what UNESCO is doing here in Egypt to implement what has been decided last year in Abu Dhabi. And as I mentioned, uh, education is a, is a key element. And so uh, I discussed with uh, uh, Professor Hassan. We created, you created here uh, at the Université Française d'Egypte this very uh, singular uh, master degree in the field of uh, uh, heritage management. And I'm sure it will be of uh, utmost interest for all the audience to know exactly what kind of courses you are organizing at Université Française uh, d'Egypte. But I've talked too much. We are very eager to, 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 to listen to you, Professor, uh, and you will be preceded by uh, short presentations by uh, Madame from UNESCO and by you, sir, from Université Française uh, d'Egypte. Thank you very much for having taken uh, the initiative to come tonight to Munira Palace. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> Mrs. Tatiana Villegas from the Cairo Bureau of UNESCO. Good evening, um, Excellency uh, Stefan Romate, Ambassador of France in Egypt, Mr. Laurent Bouvet, uh, Director of the French Institute of Oriental Archaeology, Mr. Fateh Hassan, Director of the Master Program uh, on Heritage Management at the French University of Egypt, Professor Peter Stone, former advisor to the Defense Ministry in the UK on the protection of cultural and archaeological heritage in Iraq and researcher of the Newcastle University. Um, as I was presented, I'm Tatiana Vitegas, Cultural Program Specialist at the UNESCO Cairo Office. And on behalf of Dr. Reis Faris, Director of the UNESCO Cairo, I wish to thank the French Institute of Oriental Archaeology and the French uh, University of Egypt and the French Cultural Institute for hosting this very important event and for inviting UNESCO to participate. Cultural property forms a vital part of the cultural identity of individuals, communities, people, and all humanity. It is a tangible expression of the unchanging human condition 
and of the creative genius, diversity, and memory of humankind. Its preservation is essential to human well-being and flourishing. Over the past few decades, culture has moved to the front line of war, both as collateral damage and as targeted by belligerents who use its destruction to foster violence, hatred, and vengeance. This destruction strikes at societies over the long term, weakening the foundations of peace and hindering reconciliation when hostilities end. Recent conflicts in Mali, Libya, Yemen, Iraq, and Syria have demonstrated that the protection of heritage is inseparable from the protection of human lives. The destruction of heritage has become an integral part of a global strategy of cultural cleansing which seeks to eliminate all forms of diversity. In this context, military forces need to adapt their tools, be behaviors, and skills to take into account the protection of heritage as an integral part of sustainable strategies to build peace and security. Over the past uh, seven decades, UNESCO has elaborated standard-setting instruments to help member states tackle this issue of protecting and preserving the cultural heritage in all of its forms. The 1954 Hague Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the event of armed conflict was the first international agreement of universal scope focusing exclusively on the protection of cultural property in armed conflict. It has made a tremendous contribution to the protection of cultural heritage and has inspired subsequent treaties aimed at preserving such a heritage. Following the conflicts in 1990, in the 1990s, the convention was strengthened with the adoption in March 1999 of the second protocol which reinforces the protection afforded to cultural property in armed conflict, notably through new mechanisms of implementation on the ground. This has been um, complemented by several other instruments, notably the 1970 UNESCO Convention on the Illicit Import, Export and Transfer of Ownership of Cultural Property, the 1995 UNIDRA Convention on Stolen or Illegally Exported Cultural Objects, and the 1972 UNESCO World Heritage Convention. Most recently, in 2015, UNESCO member states adopted a fully-fledged strategy for the reinforcement of UNESCO's action for the protection of culture in case of armed conflict. The examples of the rebuilding of the mausoleums in Timbuktu in Mali, destroyed by violent extremism, uh, extremist, sorry, the training of military personnel for the United Nations peacekeeping operations, MINUSMA, and the recent conviction of Ahmad al faqi al-Madi for war crimes by the International Criminal Court all attest to UNESCO's determination to take this new strategy forward. But conventions and other legal in instruments, although necessary, are not enough to tackle increasing complex situations on the ground. Just as culture is on the front line of conflict, it should be on the front line of peace. To succeed, we need to broaden and rethink traditional approaches to protect heritage. We need to connect the dots between culture, security, and humanitarian aspects, while fully respecting the mandates and prerogatives of each other. Military forces must pay particular attention and be capable of ensuring the protection of heritage in difficult circumstances. Also, as the 1954 Convention says, it is a responsibility of the state parties to introduce in peacetime into the military regulations or instructions provisions designed to ensure observance of the Convention and must foster in the members of their armed forces the spirit of respect for culture and cultural property and its people. States not party to the Convention should also follow these uh, directives. Um, they must include also the studies of the convention and these approaches into the military training. This is actually the aim of the present manual that you see on the screen, which uh, uh, I was asked to present, which was written and published thanks to the International Institute of Humanitarian Law in San Remo, Italy, and the support of the government of Azerbaijan. The publication comes at a particular <coughs> opportune time, responding as it does to the growing needs for military forces to take better account of the protection of cultural heritage during armed conflict. It is a tool to outline the practical implementation of the 54 Hague Convention and its second protocol, and enables state parties 
in cooperation with UNESCO to include in their military directives guidelines and instructions for this protection. The manual serves as a practical guide to the implementation by military forces of the rules of international law for the protection of cultural property. It combines a military-focused account of the relevant international and legal obligations of states and individuals with suggestions as to best military practice in the different levels of command and during the different phases of military operations, whether by land, sea, or air. The manual contributes to achieve and consolidate long-term security objectives, in particular, social cohesion and reconciliation. UNESCO is convinced that this manual will provide a useful and beneficial guide for future military operations. So we strongly encourage all governments to use this publication to enhance the capacity of the military forces to respond to the challenges posed by the protection of cultural heritage in armed conflict. It is not just a cultural issue, it is also a security imperative. So the manuals are authors uh, come from the UK, from France, Azerbaijan, and Italy. And um, I will go very quickly through it. Uh, it has uh, first uh, introduction to the issues and to uh, all the international uh, instruments that exist uh, and that should be known by the military including the UNESCO Conventions, the International Law of Armed Conflict, known as LOAC, uh, the uh, Protocols of the Geneva Convention, Customary International Law of Armed Conflict, War Crimes, Crimes Against Humanity, all of these uh, very important instruments that should be known to every member of the armed forces. Uh, it deals with uh, issues such as targeting, uh, the voluntary, um, collateral damage of cultural heritage, either under control of the, uh, of the army that we're talking about or, uh, or on occupied uh, lands. Also the destruction, how to uh, deal with the surrounding areas, how the use of cultural property sometimes as military uh, spaces or targets, uh, and uh, vandalism, uh, illicit traffic of cultural property, which, as you know, the Security uh, Council of the United Nations has recognized that uh, terrorist groups do finance their activities through the sale and uh, commerce of illegally uh, extracted cultural heritage from archaeological sites. So it is a, has been recognized as a major issue to attack, and the military have an important role to play uh, in this field. The transport. And also, uh, this uh, the 1954 convention and the enhanced protection of the second protocol uh, also have a distinctive marking, which is very important for all the military to know and to recognize because uh, when they inscribe a site, when the state parties inscribe a site in the enhanced protection scheme, uh, they should be respected uh, by all and there are legal sanctions to anyone who uh, does not respect these. These are the emblems of the uh, 1954 convention, and this is the emblem from the enhanced protection, plus the emblem of the 1972 uh, for cultural heritage, natural and cultural. And uh, well, I'm uh, at the UNESCO office with Dr. Reis, and we have been working uh, for several years uh, with Egypt and the neighboring countries in the fight against illicit traffic. We have cooperated with the French Institute and the French Embassy in uh, recent years on uh, participating in conferences on this issue. We hope to con continue to do so. We are now uh, in the prog program of uh, translating this manual into Arabic and its diffusion in the, in the region. Uh, we also have a major meeting in December from the 10th to the 14th uh, on the 1970 and 1954 conventions directed to the military, uh, particularly uh, the police for tourism and uh, customs and uh, military uh, officials as well in order to create uh, um, an agreement uh, in order to include these notions into the trainings and uh, to work together in the fight against illicit traffic. So that will be all and I leave the floor to Professor Stone who is going to give us his lecture. Thank you very much.
excellently the French ambassador in Egypt, Stefan Ronde, uh, dear colleagues, uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to be in this sumptuous uh, place to speak about one of the most pressing issues, not only in the Middle East, but in the world today. Uh, the devastation that we have seen of cultural heritage is unprecedented. While I was sitting, I was reflecting on the impact of the Napoleonic expedition to Egypt on Egyptian civilization, <laughs> recording and documenting uh, what was there, uh, while at this moment, uh, armies are destroying civilization. So instead of uh, helping preserve this at a time of conflict, which the Napoleonic expedition certainly was, uh, we have a totally different uh, state of affairs in the world today, which needed to be looked at not just as an act against uh, her heritage properties, but actually against civilization itself. I will not introduce uh, Peter Stone, because I think Moran will do this honor, but uh, I will second the words of His Excellency the Ambassador, but saying that indeed he is um, an astonishing scholar, uh, practitioner, but also he is a jolly good fellow. I have known him for many years, and I can vouch to his dedication and commitment uh, to his humanity. <coughs> I have also known Peter in his capacity as the executive officer to the World Archaeology Congress, the first international archaeological association that recognized the role of archaeology in contemporary world affairs and provided the first governance system that allowed junior and senior archaeologists from all over the world to be represented in an equitable manner. Peter Stone is one of those archaeologists whose career admirably reveals a deep commitment and dedication to the deployment of archaeology for better future for humankind. In his capacity uh, as executive officer of WAC, that's the World Archaeology Congress, he also was the executive series editor, uh, which was aptly called One World Archaeology. Uh, this anticipates many of the movements that are going on today, talking about humanity, talking about the world as one, uh, not minimizing its diversity, which also Peter Stone speaks about. Uh, in this series, just to show the, the range of issues that were tackled in this series, it dealt with the destruction and conservation of cultural property, uh, illicit trade in antiquities, 20th century conflicts, natural disasters, and indigenous peoples, among many others. He himself was actually committed to uh, these issues, as shown by his own publications, uh, which are extremely similar in the reformation of archaeology as we know it. Archaeology as a construct, not as something that we inherit as such, but it's something that we do, the way we construct the past. And so for this reason, it becomes uh, clear why he chose titles such as the presented past about museums and education. Remember that his degree was on education and archaeology, so that becomes part of his mission. Uh, the other book is the excluded past, given that there are many stories that are shunned away and uh, never told. And then the constructed past, extremely important book on how we construct heritage uh, that is not necessarily handed over to us, but we are we participate by protecting it or by omitting uh, talking about it in the reconstruction of heritage, which is one of the issues we firmly believe in in our program at the French University in Egypt. With the Gulf War, 
he became deeply committed for the protection of cultural properties at times of armed conflict. It led to the publication of the prize-winning co-edited book, The Destruction of Cultural Heritage in Iraq, 2006. But he also soon realized that there are ethical issues facing cultural heritage experts who engage with the military. Uh, so he authored papers such as, does working with the military really constitute tacit agreement with military and political goals? Which was followed by an edited book on cultural heritage ethics and the military in 2011, it's the same year where he was awarded the honorary title Officer of the British Empire for his services uh, in heritage education. In the spirit of his role in heritage education and the protection of heritage assets in times of armed conflict, our program, the Cultural Heritage Management Program at the French University in Egypt, is proposing an initiative, uh, a short course, on the protection of cultural heritage at times of conflict uh, to be open regionally to uh, other countries as well. And it will not only include providing the military with the laws and conventions that protect cultural heritage property, but provide training uh, for the protection of cultural heritage that's threatened, which begins with advising them about the recent and current measures to mitigate the damage caused by armed conflict with an emphasis on ethics, legislation, and institutions. It is also important to provide them with information on how to prepare before the conflict and how to develop policy frameworks, including preparation of intent, inventories, and risk assessment. It becomes clear that we also have to uh, decide who are we training and for what purpose. Uh, from the policy makers, the parliament, parliamentarians, all the way to the different ranks of the military. Those who will be in combat and those who will be in their offices and the planners and the strategists. Uh, they will also be given information on how to disseminate this information, how to raise awareness and how to develop policy briefs. At times of conflict, they have to be trained on how to rescue heritage uh, resources. And after the conflict, they will have to be engaged in reparation, reconstruction, restoration, and recovery of artifacts. Uh, we will also aim at introducing the use of virtual and augmented reality uh, to simulate operations that can, they can safely be engaged in. We look forward to work with Professor Peter Stone in developing this training course and hope that it can be of service to the Arab region in the context of the international fund that His Excellency the Ambassador has mentioned, um, as well as in the ongoing efforts by UNESCO for the protection of cultural heritage uh, at times of conflict. Thank you.